oh, if you can find where your original opening was. Ah, there. There it is. By the way, I'm Colleen G. Lee. I'm here to inspire, motivate, and share ideas for refashioning clothing. And if you are new, consider subscribing. So this is what I'm going to be using for this detachable cuffs. Now this is from a project that I did um, a short while ago. I'll put it here and uh, the results are amazing and I love it. Oh, it really is. And um, so I thought, as I am refashioning, I want to use oh, as much leftover from other projects. So this is a big section that was left over from that project. So I decided that I wanted to use this for the detachable cuffs. So, um, and you're gonna need roughly about a large amount and it really does depend how big and how small you want your cuffs to be and um, I'm going to make mine as big as I possibly can, well not too big but I do want it to be a statement kind of cuff as well and it can be worn with um, jackets, uh, blouses, dresses, yeah it can be worn, worn with an, any item of clothing because obviously it is detachable. So what you are going to need for this video is some elastic for sure. Um, for the measurement of your wrist, it really will depend on the fabric that you're using and also the elastic as well. It's just quite a firm elastic and I am, you can pull the elastic if you want it to be tighter, but I wouldn't recommend that too much. Um, so I haven't stretched mine, so I've got measurement there that I want for my cuff and I'm just going to go a little bit beyond that and then cut it in half. So that is what I'm doing now, get my scissors, cut and cut the other side. So let me just show you what I've done so you can see and it just laps over about an inch, I suppose, 2.5 centimeters. Um, and if you wanted to pull your elastic and want it even tighter, you could do, it really will depend, but I would test it first to see how comfortable it is. So I haven't actually stretched this at all um, because there's gonna be a lot of gathering there as well. Um, so do bear that in mind. So I've got those ready and the, the, how, however long you want your cuff to be, from there to there or do you want it to be small or as wide really is going to be dependent on you now I want to use the design that's in here as much as that as possible so I'm gonna go quite big actually just just because I can and then I'm going to use the border of this to make the straps in order to create the bows. So if you've got a similar sort of fabric, then it's it'll be quite interesting to use the border for the actual bows, for the tying of the bows. And yeah, let's get started. So here it is the, the border to this part of the fabric dress that it, that it was once. Um, and I am going to be cutting out this section on both sides, so I'll have two. So that will create the bows for the cuffs. And then I'm going to use all of this here, this section here, all this pattern here for the actual cuff. And then there'll, there'll just be a little bit that's left over, which is going to be that, which isn't that much. And I might use the rest, the top of this section if I don't have enough for the border that I want to achieve, the look that I'm looking for. So I decided that I am going to use the rest of this and why not? So there's minimum waste.
so that I can extend my bows. And that's all that will be left over that more than likely will go into the scrap, but it's not as much as what it was before. That's the most important thing. I've cut out all the sections that I need. So this is going to what's going to be the bows and that's the border. So I've got two of those and I've decided that I'm going to extend it with the top section of that dress like I suggested earlier. So that's going to be added to that. So that's going to be the bows and this is going to be the cuff section. So I've got two strips of that. And so now that we've cut out, the next thing is to do is to join the sections together. The border and the top section in order to extend the bows and then we'll move on to doing the cuffs but we'll get the bow. Now I have sewn the bow, this strip here and pressed. So what you need to do in order to get a finished strip a bow is you're going to need some kind of tool, this is a knitting needle, in order to bring this to the right side. So once you've got a long strip, whatever length you want it to be, you sew down the you sew down the short end and then you sew along the long edge and you leave a little bit of an opening. And um, where's my opening? My opening's here. Just poke this in there so you can see. So you just leave a small opening. That, that opening will depend on the, the thickness of the fabric that you're using, maybe a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit bigger because your fabric is thicker. Um, but it's only a small opening. And you leave an opening there, you continue sewing straight down to the other end, and then you go sew down the short end. And then it's ready to be turned out to the right side. So what you do is, you make a little well at, what, at both ends really, put your form in like so, and then just get your needle. Do not poke too hard, it should be just a gentle process in order just to get it to where you want it to go, just like this. Just kind of root it up. It should be just gentle, don't be, because you don't want to poke a hole in there at all until you find your opening. There's my opening, see? And it comes out. Now, at this stage here, I'll just do a gentle poking out of the edges of these corners, like so. Just a gentle, you don't want any, don't, don't stab away it, just gently do it on both ends. And then remove the needle and just gently pull. And then you repeat it on the other end. Okay, the other one is now pulled through. I just need it to be pressed so it looks like this. As you can see, it does really need a good press. Now for the cuff section, you're going to need to do is just get your fabric, fold, in, fold it in half and then pin. So get the edges together, you can base if you wish, if you feel more comfortable to do that then do so. and then sew a straight line, closing at that edge. So we're aiming for this. This is the finished one. Well, not completely complete because we need to put elastic in, but in order to get it to the right side, like a tube here. Next thing to do is to get your hand in Get the seam, pull that through like so to the 
other end. So you're working on the wrong side. And then you're going to get some pins. And you're going to pin all the way around, leaving an opening because you're going to be pulling it through to the right side. I'll just put one more pin in here, take it to my sewing machine and then sew it together. So it'll be a case of starting here, sew all the way around, leave an opening. So that's leave an opening of about 2.5 centimetres an inch, maybe a little bit more depending on the thickness of your fabric. The next step is to pull the right side through that small opening you've just created. Just go gently, there's no rush. Just tease it through gently. It's almost like magic. Just keep pulling and it will sort itself out when it comes to the right side. I know it looks like a mess at the moment, but it's not. And there we go. We have our tube. Let's come through our opening. So the next step after this one is to then press. So let me just get to this side so you can see the opening there. And then just get that into the center. I'm getting mine to the center roughly. Doesn't have to be, it could be further up. It depends on the look that you're going for. But yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to press that so it's nice and flat. Now, we're coming to the final stage now where you need to think about your elastic because your elastic is going to be threaded through. So what I'm going to do is create a casing for the elastic to funnel through. So it channels through. So it comes like that. So let's do that now. So you're going to decide on the width that you're going to have for your elastic. So mine's going to be here. So I'm just gonna put a pin here and a pin here. So what will happen is I'm going to sew from here all the way around and the same on this side, I'm gonna sew all the way around in order to create a channel. I have created channels, you can just about see them. There, that runs all the way around. There's the opening. You're going to need a safety pin. You're going to need two actually. One in which to funnel the elastic into the channel because it's such a small amount of elastic you're working with, you don't want to lose it. So you need to get your second pin and then pin it to an area that's close to the opening. And then you start to funnel the elastic all the way around. I do have a video tutorial on that. Please check the description in order to watch that tutorial. That funneled it through the casing, elastic casing, you'll end up with something like that. That looks amazing. And just do the same to the other one. So all I need to do now, if you can, find where your original opening was. Ah, there. 
There it is. And then place your strip like so. Make sure it's there even and then you can either take a sew machine and sew straight down or you can flip it over which is what I will do and use a slip stitch to sew it into place and that way you don't have anything shown on the other side and then it'll be ready to be worn. So there we have it, our detachable cuff. And there's the bow. And this is the cuff section, which is all frill. And it is so gorgeous. So to get to that stage, it looks like this. And the straps here. Like I mentioned earlier, you could have either have taken it to a sewing machine and have done it a straight stitch down, um, and then you'd have a line of stitching. I didn't want that, as you can see, there is none. So I did a hand sewing stitch, which is a slip stitch in order to sew that in place. And I'm happy with the result. And it's just a case of then just tying it and then you have another bow to complement the other, like so. Let me just put, quickly put those on so you can see. Yes, that's gorgeous. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video tutorial. Um, the most challenging part would be the elastic, I would say, because you're working with a small amount of elastic, but don't forget about the second pin. It will help tremendously. I do have video tutorials in order to help you with sewing techniques in the description, so please click on those. What else do I need to remember? Remember to sew and press as you go in order to get nice flat areas in which to work on. And yeah, that's it. And that's all I need to advise you. Whatever amount you're working with, do consider the, um, the, 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 the measurement around your wrist. Mine is a little bit loose because I know I'll be wearing it over um, jackets and also um, cardigans and um, sweaters. Um, so do bear that in mind. And with the bow itself, that may help a little bit. So, you know, there's a little bit of thought process you need in order to make sure that um, you're gonna get the right fit for whatever garment you're wearing with, or you may just be wearing it um, without um, garments, so your arms may not have anything there. So you may just put it on your wrist as is. So yeah, so if you enjoyed that, if you enjoyed the video tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and please do share with your friends and on your social media. And I will see you next time.